early onset Parkinson's disease is being a neglected condition so far. Up until recently, up until now, there was not even an harmonized definition for the age cutoff for early onset Parkinson's disease. There were plenty of studies talking about early onset or young onset. There was not even a clear nomenclature that defined how to define Parkinson's disease in the young. The Moon Disorder uh, Society had been launched um, during COVID, actually, a task force of international experts that I had the honor to chair, together with my colleague E.K. Tan in, um, from, uh, from in Asia, to define and to provide recommendations that can help harmonizing the scientific definition of this condition. Currently, um, we're going to have some um, guidelines, recommendations that are going to come in the coming, uh, in a coming movement disorder uh, clinical practice journal, um, then we are recommending that the definition of early onset Parkinson's disease would be below the age of 50. So 50 and below. Um, in the past, that was not the case. In the literature, you can find, we can find um, 45 years and below, 40 and below, 50 and below, 60 and below. But the major problem and the major interest of the task force is to make sure that we are make, make clear that early onset Parkinson is a total different disease. In what sense? Not only biologically, because it's true. In early onset Parkinson, there's a major component, biological component that doesn't exist, which is age. Aging is gone. So we don't have a frailer brain compared to somebody in their 70s and 80s. But also the protein, alpha synuclein, the main problem for Parkinson's disease that everybody talks about, it may not be a key player in early onset Parkinson's disease. And mitochondria, for example, can be the main player in early onset Parkinson's disease. And needless to say, this is a condition that has major implications that are different than late onset. If somebody is in his 30s, on her 30s, 40s, 50s, they're active member of society. They're still working, they have family, they have the kids taking, taking care of the kids, not the kids taking care of them. They already are, they already maybe, again, still working. They are far away from the retirement age. So the implications are completely different. Another problem that we know little about it and the task force is working heavily to make it happen is pregnancy and Parkinson's disease. We have no idea, well, the data are very scattered. We have very few data. We have no idea, I would say, how to counsel our, our young women with Parkinson's disease. Should you have, should you have a baby? Should, what medication you should be taking? That, was, that has been a neglected field, and we are trying to fill this massive gap of knowledge. And lastly, but it's not lastly, is a very important definition. We have problems to make people, make patients, but make also our colleagues understand, think about early onset Parkinson's disease, even when they see patients that are young, you don't expect them to have the condition. This is a condition that is on the rise. The population is increasing dramatically, is doubling in the last 20 years. And you can argue it's because we have uh, uh, more knowledge of that, but it's not just a matter of knowledge. We are seeing this in our population. We are seeing a complete increase in the population of the, of the frequency of this condition that doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to follow the prognosis of Parkinson's disease. Generally speaking, it seems to be, quote, quote, more benign, really be slower, having a different way to, 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 to deal with the medication and the side effects are different. We are finding dogmas such as, for example, do not use dopamine, L-DOPA, when uh, you're young because it can be detrimental for yourself and can cause you have this kinesia. And we are fighting these dogmas because it's not necessarily the case all the time, as well as we're fighting uh, a, a knowledge that, we, that I grew up with, which is early onset Parkinson is associated with a genetic uh, familiar history. And it's not the case. Is not always the case. This is what I was taught and is not necessarily true. It, the genetic uh, uh, abnormality, the, the genetic mutation can include, can identify just a group of patients with some familiarity, but the mass majority do not seem to have that. So we are having a major effort to try to improve this uh, situation and to try to provide a, a service to our patients and to our patients worldwide and to our colleagues worldwide 
to start to provide recommendations that can be helpful in the clinical practice and in the management of these patients.